Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. Let's solve lead code problem number 1493, longest subarray of ones after deleting one element. The problem name itself is the description of the problem. In this problem, we are given an array and we have to find the length of the maximum subarray after deleting any one of the element. For example, in this array, if we delete this zero, what is the length of the array of continuous ones or consecutive ones? It is 3, right? So 3 will be the answer. Similarly, in this case, say if we want to delete this element, if we delete this particular 0, our maximum will still be 3. This won't do much of an effect. But say if we delete this 0, our maximum length will become this 3 plus this 2 that is equal to 5 in this case. What will be the, this is one of the corner cases. In this case, it is given that we must delete one element. So if we are going to delete, there is no zero in this. So the answer will be two in this case. This is one of the corner cases. So which approach should we use? So before going into the approaches, the problem that arises is we do know many approaches and that will come in between the solution and this problem. And let us come up with a very simple approach after saying this. See at every zero, what we are just doing here is we are adding whatever was the previous number of ones and whatever is the next number of ones. Whatever is the correct current number of ones and whatever was the previous number of ones. That is itself what we are doing. Let me give you an example. All we need is just two variables where we will start with current will be equal to zero and previous will also be equal to zero. And once you encounter a one, our current will be increased. So first it will be one, two, three, four. So our current will be four and our previous will not change. But once you encounter this zero, what happens is this four, we will change the value of the previous to four and our current will just be zero. Our current will be changed to zero, but our previous will be changed to four. Now let's go further. Our current will be increased to 1 and our current will be increased to 2. So current equals 2 and previous will be equal to 4. So what will be the answer in this case now? The answer is just the sum of the current plus previous that is equal to 6. And again after this iteration our previous will just be equal to 4 and our current will be equal to sorry previous will become 2 and our current will be 0. Now once we encounter the next 0 our answer changes but this will be the final answer let's do the same thing for this particular problem our current will be zero initially our previous will also be zero initially this zero won't any change anything because it zero will just be exchanged with zero now once you have encountered this our current will become two and our previous will be zero but once you encounter this zero they will just swap their values that is current not swap their values current will become zero and previous will be swapped with our current value that is equal to two but once you have encountered this our answer will be two in that case once you encounter this also our answer will be continuing to be zero itself why because the current is actually equal to zero and finally we will be having this array and don't forget once you come out of the for loop as well we should be checking if the current and previous is greater than the already existing value. The only corner case is this corner case where the answer will be 3. But since that is equal to the length of the array, our answer will not be 3 but equal to 2. Now let's dive into the pseudo code of this simple approach. We'll have two variables. One is the previous variable and one is the current variable. Both of them are initiated to 0. Now once we start it, Whenever there is a 1, our current number of zeros increases. But if you encounter a 0, what we will be doing is we will be computing the answer at this point. That is, if the current plus previous length is greater than our answer, we will be changing answer. If not, there is no use of this. Our answer will be continuing. But in the next stages will be swapping the value. Not swapping, we will be exchanging the value of current to previous. That is, previous value is changed to current value and our current value becomes zero why the count of current ones will be zero finally after the for loop we should compute this again why because the corner case that is once occurring at the end can also occur so this should also be done after the for loop then there is a final check if our answer equals to the length of the array that is for example this array 
our answer will be equal to nums dot length but we have to delete one element so our answer will be 2 or if it is not equal to nums dot length our answer will continue to be the same answer see this might be a very easy problem but there are problems ranging from very easy to difficult this is a very easy problem but if you haven't got the solution to this problem try this out and try this solution next then these problems range from very easy to a difficult level and we have a dedicated telegram group uh, where we can discuss the approaches for this problem and also you can ask any doubts if you have i have shared the telegram link in the description so let's dive into the code it's a very simple code just like the pseudo code we have two variable three variables initiated this will keep track of the final answer and whenever there is a one we will increase the current and whenever there is a zero what we'll be doing is we'll be computing our answer if our answer is greater than the maximum we'll be changing the answer and we will be changing the previous value to current value and our current will become zero Finally, these two statements as discussed. Thank you for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe.